Good. Well, welcome to uh, this evening's play cricket training uh, session, which is uh, really about setting up fixtures for leagues. Um, play cricket will become uh, an increasingly important part of full cricket in Wales, as the expectation really will be that, that we want to get ev every game, every match, every player possibly on play cricket. And all boards, including Wales, um, are likely to be measured uh, as to how many people and how much cricket is engaged and connected with play cricket. And it may even affect our grants, uh, whether that's at a board or a club level in the future. But positively, uh, this is a great tool to help with player engagement. Um, it will help leagues track participation um, and obviously is a, a great tool for uh, results um, statistics, creating tables and, and many other benefits like that. This workshop is around uh, setting up fixtures, particularly for leagues, and workshop number two will be uh, particularly for uh, uh, putting in results and detailed scorecards. Um, there will be a third element to this, which is a standalone video for uh, individuals and parents who get individual registrations uh, of players on. Um, so across the three pieces will be fully uh, upskill how to use play cricket for everyone in Wales. Um, I'm going to introduce Chris Seal now. Chris, who you see on the picture, will be our main presenter tonight. He is our guru um, and he will be uh, guiding us through the whole um, fixture creation process. And I'm also pleased to see from the ECB is Tom Parry and Tom uh, will be there in the chat uh, box and he'll be answering your every question, hopefully about play cricket, but I'm sure his wisdom extends to other areas as well. We're looking at about 45 minutes for the presentation, plus any questions that you've got, just to give you some um, uh, guidance about the, the whole evening. So I'm gonna hand straight over to Chris, and uh, thank you again to Chris and Tom for your time. Thanks a lot, over to you. No worries. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, um, like I said, I'm going to do most of the talking uh, and Tom's going to do most of the reading and all the hard work of answering questions via the chat boxes. Um, so I duck out of that bit a little bit there. Um, so if you do have a question, um, just, just write in the chat box and Tom will come down to it. He might say I'm coming on to that bit, but I'll, I'll try and get there. Um, I'm just going to share my screen a second and just make sure that's all working. So what I will do as part of tonight as well is um, I'm not going to refer to this too much during the evening however I like to just kind of just make sure that people are aware of what I've got um, coming for you guys as well is I've got a PowerPoint um, document and I don't think my screen has my screen shared yes it has um, I've got a PowerPoint document that you should see on the screen now this is something that I created um, last year regarding um, getting into cricket as a league and trying it on board and and really what i've tried to do is take um the help guides from our help desk and put them all in one place to create a kind of league journey so just go on to this next slide here just what i've tried to do is just kind of visually represent what from day one um you, you need to do from a league point of view all the way up to the match day which is where the republished fixtures item is there and and what i've done in this guise is just on page by page try to li list these steps to workable steps and just put help guides behind them so i'm going to send this one out to you guys at the end of the call well, I'll, I'll send it on to be sent out with the videos um but this is there just to kind of help help with uh, any questions doing things however tonight we're going to talk a little bit about um obviously league members because it's one of the steps you need to do to create fixtures and your divisions um, I'm going to touch on this because I've been asked to um, about how to manage your contacts via play cricket as well. So we'll just do a brief bit on that. And then really we'll be going through like the setups and we'll be going into divisions and fixtures tonight. What I'll try and do is I'll get this, uh, get through the content as much as possible, showing you some live demos on some of our league sites, um, on, on our league test site. So we'll actually set a division up together. Um, and then after after that we'll do some questions and hopefully we'll be able to do some bespoke questions and stuff anything that i cannot answer tonight um i'll refer you to the help desk so we can have a conversation there and if any of you have been to the help desk before you probably recognize me and tom because we're the ones that 
um, deal with the tickets coming to the help desk anyway. And we try to give as much information as possible and do like a challenge. Um, and our help desk, even though I've got it in the PowerPoint presentation, I'll show you how you access our help desk from the Play Cricket site during the evening as well today for you. So because I don't want to do death by PowerPoint, I'm going to turn the PowerPoint off now um, and bring you onto a league site. So what I thought I would start with tonight is just showing just a tour of what a front end the front end site a front end league site now looks like so what 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 have we done over the winter to try and make it so it's simpler to you simpler to use for your members coming and having a look so i've picked a couple here I've got surrey championship and derbyshire and neither of them mind me showing off their league sites because they've taken quite a lot of effort uh, with them and and really been, and, and really like the results they're getting from their members so on here, this is the new template we've got on the front end here, um, which can be um, set up on any league site by the main administrator of the league site. And um, there's lots of configurable options, but unlike Site Builder, the configuration takes about 10 minutes, whereas Site Builder you used to take about an hour to set up the front page. So just coming down on Derbyshire's here, a uh, bit of a welcome message here. Uh, the main league sponsors are put proudly at the top here have an announcement section where on Derbyshire they link directly to news articles on their site so clicking these goes straight to the news section so they can just really target what they want people seeing a who you are section then um, a place which lists every single competition also lists any cups and also lists any tournaments and this is a quick 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 link to go straight to that division page which will have on it um, the league table the next 10 fixtures, um, which you can expand this on as well. So that's for every single division, um, can be accessed by the home page, which is something that has been um, asked for for quite a while. Um, also, we have a list of the clubs. And on Derbyshire, the admins have gone through and made sure the clubs have all got their, picture, their, their badges on them. And you can click on a club and it will take you through to their club site. So again, it's just a, a journey to get uh, people from A to B, uh, which is what we've tried to do for the league area there. Again, another area for sponsors because we know leagues have more than one sponsor and we have them listed at the bottom there. Um, you can add sponsors to divisions as well. So on those division pages, when you click them, the sponsor comes up as well. Um, so we've got that one there. What we've, what Derbyshire haven't done, but I think Surrey have done, is they've added a Hall of Fame section. So it's brought up the twenty. They've set this up for the twenty nineteen season. So it's just brought up their um, best batting, best bowling, and, and the best uh, team performances. Um, and you can set this up to be a weekly item, so it can scan through and you can um, set up your stats for the week and stuff. So it's all an engagement tool just to get players engaged. So just uh, another example of what you can do with the site. Um, tonight we're going to be working on uh, my test site. So we're on Steve's six side league site. Um, you'll see some weird and wonderful stuff where we'll have boxes with testing in and all those bits and pieces there so don't worry about that one this isn't actually an active site if it was then I would be on an honours board somewhere because I'm pretty sure I've scored about 600 runs in the first two weeks of the season um, but we are we're excluded unfortunately um, so just going into the admin area what I'm going to show first is just how to get in there so first of all to be an admin in the league site, you need to be a member of that website. Um, you also need to have a signed up play cricket account and you also need the administrator role. Also, um, if you're using um, Internet Explorer still, um, play cricket won't run on Internet Explorer for admin anymore um, because Microsoft hasn't released any security updates for six months. So it's now considered unsecure. So um, I'm on Google. I'm doing all my demos on Google Chrome tonight. Um, here you can see I've got my signing account up here. Um, I've also linked my two children on, and we'll go through this on the next call uh, regarding how to link children to parents. Um, and for this demo, we're just going to go into the site administration area. Okay, so once in the site administration area, um, you're brought to your action centre, which is kind of which is where everything 
goes um we try to email out of play cricket as little as possible there are some exceptions regarding uh, nominations rejected and um, declined which admins can turn off personally if they wish um, but we have this action center here where we try and put any information that's outstanding now i'll show it later when we do a bit of the setup but what we try to do with play cricket is do everything um only have things presented here if they need to be actioned on so we do um for example umpire reports and team reports we we add a threshold limit on those and if the threshold if the score is below the threshold you get the admin announcement about it but if everything's fine you don't get alerted about it so we try to do everything if there's a problem you get alerted if there isn't a problem then you know it's it's going forward However, you have the chance to put bits and pieces in there um, regarding how long people have to um, respond to. And that all uh, comes in your um, in your admin area here. For example, I've got bits and pieces set up about scorecards, missing information, uh, players' details have changed. Um, I've got bits and pieces around the questionnaires, which I'll go into in a little bit, a little bit. Also bits about missing and incomplete results as well. So all this can be managed Base, once set up by your action center um, and we we say for leagues to check this every uh, one to two days just to get bits and pieces on during the season new feature that we've added as well is just this dashboard area and this um, is just kind of a, a health check to check how many of your clubs are scoring into your into your league site and how many of those are using electronic scoring We've also got a little bit about um, registered member uh, registered members versus the temporary records on the club sites. So, uh, and that comes through here. And then we've got a little bit about website statistics, just telling you where people are looking on your websites. Okay, so that's the two kind of admin visual areas that you've got there. Where you find you'll do most of the bulk of your work will be in day to day, where you man manage um, any fixtures. Uh, and results once created and also it's where if you do run reg a registered player process it's also where you manage your registered players okay um, and I can go into that right at the end of the call if you wish um, it's it's listed as an optional on the league document it's, it's good practice to use registered players of course um, but you don't necessarily need to have it to set up divisions and fixtures in play cricket the website content area is is all the front end kind of content so the about us page which is all your your details as a competition also where you'd manage any photos on your site any documents on your site and also you've got the options for site builder which is the legacy site um the way to build the web pages and we've also got template config where all the new stuff is so the new home page is here and the new way to create the HTML pages is in here in Page Builder. But also, you've got some of the bits and pieces regarding how to set up the menu bar and some defaults for fixtures, results, documents. And that's all in this area here. Um, setup is where we're going to be in for the majority of the evening tonight. And we're going to go through um, setting up your league members to setting up a competition to looking at how to get some of your own rules in there if we haven't got the if if the ones that we've created centrally do not um do not tick the do not do the job uh, and then we'll go on to uh about fix how to generate the fixtures um and there's a couple of ways that we can generate fixtures in play cricket so we'll um, we'll, we'll go through those so just to start off with i'll just talk about the about us section so First of all, you've got um, your about us section for your league. Um, and any information that is controlled, i.e. the details of the competition, is all accessed through about us. So this is your um, address page. So if you have a postcode and map coordinates in, you'll have your, your league headquarters on a map if you wish to. If you don't, then you just leave these areas blank. You can also set up all your... Um, all your officials so you can list any officials that you wish to to list um, and they can be publicly shown on your site or wise, or you can have the option also to hide them um, on your site as well but this is just so people can get in touch and 
all the details of these official positions are communicated to the county board. So they can send a questionnaire similar to a questionnaire you can send to clubs, which I'll go through in just a second, um, to have updates of your details so they can contact you via play cricket rather than having Excel spreadsheets. Um, so it's really good to keep this up to date. Also means that people are getting in touch with the right people. And to, to just update bits and pieces in here, while I'm on here, I can just press the edit buttons and uh, has all the information that you update just inside here. Okay. So you've got that kind of area there. Um, now, what I did say was I was going to talk about, um, at the same time, the kind of questionnaire process, how, how this works for clubs as well. So every club has an About Us page like the League page. And um, you have access to all the data on those pages via, via your club contact sec section here. So anybody that has a official role or an other role. So an official role of the, there's, there's a, I think there's 20 or 30 roles that we've put into play cricket, which we've been told are roles within a club, which leagues and county boards need to contact on a regular basis. And then we have an other section as well, where you can, where a club can add anything extra um, and if a league has got something that they really think is prevalent, um, so junior coordinator was added a few years ago because that became more of a club um, requirement. So we added that as onto the main ECB list of actual club officials. So we've got junior coordinator now. We've recently renamed um, the safeguarding officer uh, role. I think it's two. Is it two safeguarding officer now? It was, I think it was work club welfare officer beforehand. So we've now changed that in line with all safeguarding as well. Um, so we kind of manage that there. So in day to day, this is where you have the ability to look at the contacts of the clubs that are in your league. And I'll show during setup how you get clubs assigned into your league. So in Steve's six aside league, there's four clubs. You see Anna's test site here. And I can say that I want to um, know the details of the junior captain. Sorry, junior coordinator. I hope this is going to come up with my name. Yeah, there we go. So it will then bring up the details that have been entered into the club site for who their junior coordinator is. So you can see here in, in black is um, the record that is on the club site. And in red is the um, the current what what was currently held on um, on your league site. So the club's done an update there um, because it's now in black. So I'd I'd always take the club's update rather than the league's update. And you can just edit this out um, if you wish to. I'm going to do it tonight because I know that's there for testing. So I've got that one there. Okay, um, so you can access um, the club's email addresses, then you can email these people directly from in play cricket. So you could search for all your junior coordinators this way and just uh, click on and click it. But this is only as good as the data that you get. And so we built this area in here, which is called questionnaires, where you can set up a questionnaire. And um, if I go to one I set up earlier, you can request that all clubs give you the information on your club captain, make it mandatory as well, and on your team captains. And press save. And then press send. And then you can select which clubs you want to send this to. And then this will add those clubs to update the details of their captain, uh, their team captain and their, their club captain. Um, and they'll do this. Um, they'll do this via their um, action centre, um, which means that you then have updated details. So usually, we advise leagues to do this almost once per season. Um, you can also, if you wish, partner up with your county board on this because they can run the same kind of questionnaire and ask for the same update of the details, um, which means that you don't have to send it out as well. So by all means coordinate however if you do end up sending two questionnaires out the beauty of the system is is it will pre-populate the questionnaire with any of the current details on the clubs about us page so if the clubs have kept it up to date 
when they get the questionnaire in, they can just press submit and return it to you. Um, so they don't have to do any work if they've kept their club up to date. If they haven't kept it up to date, then they have to do a bit of work. But if you've sent the questionnaire out and then the county board sends the questionnaire out the next week, the data will be exactly the same. So all they just do is press submit and it would uh, submit the new data up there for them. Okay, so that's questionnaires. You can list, you can literally ask you can ask for updates on every club official if you wish if you knew that some club officials weren't mandatory uh, for the league you don't have to tick them as mandatory but if you want to see if how many people out there have got a um a, a club captain um then by all means you could tick it and just not put mandatory and then you get data back so it's all as good as the data we've got there okay so questionnaires is a really useful tool um to keep your club information all in one place and then you can do your communications from being playing cricket as well okay so um just going back to day to day um and we'll cover this up a little bit later on but like i said most of the time once everything's set up it's fixtures and results that you'll be living in during the season where you can review results and you can review fixtures however as i said um if there's nothing wrong with any of the results you won't be notified about it on the action center so if all the results have come in on time um you won't have any action to take because they will it won't tell you to take any action because they're all in on time but if you do wish to view it you can view it by just pressing the results panel at any time um the member database option that is here is members of the league site and the only real members that you probably want on your league site are any of your club of any of your league officials and then possibly your umpires. And the reason for having your umpires on the league site rather than the club site is that um, then you don't have lots and lots of umpires being created on club sites. Also, you have the option when creating a division just to use league umpires only. So you've got that option there um, and you can just give them an umpire role so you can filter through them on the members database. Um, and we'll do more about adding members onto the members database on the next call because it's more of a clubs kind of uh, thing to do. However, on league sites, you can add members exactly the same way as, as you wish. Okay, so that's that bit there. So what we're gonna talk about today more so is about um, setting up um, division uh, and fixtures. So this is all done through setup. So your division setup is just in competitions here. Um, however, I just want to just highlight another step here um, beforehand. Now, before to, you can set up all your divisions without having any clubs assigned to your um, league site. However, in the divisions process, it'll ask you to add teams. And you can't add a team unless the club is a member of your site. So the easiest way that I find when setting anything up for a league site is I go to league members first. And it will bring up any clubs um, that I have currently in my league. And if I need to add a club into my league, I can just press the add button up here. Um, type in the name of the club I wish to add. So I'm going to search for Tom's club. So Tom's test site is there. I can pick that. And now that's added Tom's test site, Tom's club to our league. Um, and it allow me to put teams into his divisions. I can also edit Tom's test site to an abbreviation if I wish to, to go on league tables and all those bits and pieces. Um, something that's quite handy here as well is this competitions uh, button here. And you can actually get a list of all the competitions which are currently active where um, this, this, this club has a team in. Um, so I, I like it just to check on bits and pieces. I also like to use that if, um, for example, a, a club has merged a junior section with a, a adult section, because it usually allows me to find where I need to change the teams over quicker. So I've got that on there. Um, so that's how you add a league to your site. And if you're a brand new league site, you, you'd sit here and add all of your clubs um, to, to, to your league site beforehand. Um, and we try to help you out as much as possible here by putting the county um of the club so you can make sure that you're getting the correct one just something to note here is there's this uh, club here and it's not in the blue text 
This is an unclaimed site, so there's no one currently administrating this site. However, you can still add it as a league member and you can still add teams to this unadministered site as well. Um, and basically what that does is that the site that is playing them, that is on Play Cricket, would have to do all the work in entering the fixture. But it's there just in case you haven't got someone active on Play Cricket, although we do encourage everyone, every club to claim their site so that you don't have to deal with that complication there. Um, if you wish to access these sites again, just double check they're the right ones. You can just click on these and it will take you to the website of that club. And it, again, it's just there as a check. So that's just adding league members in there. So that's the first, what I think is the first step in setting up your, um, your league. Next thing is you go to competitions and you go to set up divisions. Now this will lift up any divisions which have been, are not archived. So you can see here that I'm very lazy on my league test site and I have divisions open from 2017. Most leagues will just have the current season in here. And these are all of the divisions that we have currently on Steve Six Aside League. Now, if you are starting a division from scratch, is what we're gonna to do tonight, is I'll just hit this add division button at the top here. I can then select name, which will just bring me up some of the most recently um, used names for divisions that haven't got a 2021 20, division. But you can just create one here. So I'm just going to create one called Wales Test. You select the season. And then you've got the option here to create a new structure, which means you're setting up the division from scratch or you can copy it from any division that is active in your active list. So this is really helpful if you've got, say the same rules for divisions um, two, three and four, um, you set them up as all separate divisions, but you can copy the same structure from two for three and four, just saves you time. And then you, all you need to do is put your teams in for that division. We're gonna just select create a new structure today, just for this demo. So I'm just gonna press save. So at this point, it's created my division, but it brings you straight into the setup area for the division. So it doesn't take you back to the menu to click again. It just brings you straight to the setup area. What it'll ask you to do at the top here is it'll ask you to apply a scoring rule to your division. Now, if you haven't set your scoring rule up or you're not too sure what your scoring rule is going to be yet, you don't have to do that at this point. But it has to be in there for before the fixtures are generated for the division. And to click in this box, you've got a several... Um, options here on this test site. Um, the main ones that we have are the ECB ones, which are the generic ones that me, myself and Tom have created. Uh, and we've tried to cover off as many kind of standard templates as much as possible. What I'll do in, uh, what I'll do after we've done the division setup is I'll take you to the setup area where you can actually create your own scoring rules. So if one of these isn't right for you, I'll show you where you can do that. So I'm just going to select a 20 overs per side for this division here. Now, if I'm having this uh, scoring rule run throughout the whole of the season, you don't need to put starts and end dates in. However, if you find that you're doing a season, you're doing a split season where you start with 40 over games at the start of the season, and then you go down to 20 over games for the second half of the season, you can put the scoring rule different for different parts of the season. Um, so you've, you've got that one there. Next bit is your kind of validation area. So um, validation rules, you can set up your own validation rules on your site via setup, and I'll go through that in just a second. Um, I'll just leave that blank for now because we can always come back to it. You've got another couple of tick boxes here, and this just defines some of the player processes you use. So you've got player registration required and only league umpires. And if you're not worried about those, then just leave those unticked. Next section allows you to set what your usual match days are and your match time. And this helps with the auto fixture generation that's in Play Cricket. So we've got an auto fixture generator. So I'm just going to press Saturday and I'm just going to put my match start time at one o'clock. You can also lock certain info that you're generating when you're doing fixtures so that clubs cannot change them. So I'm going to lock the date and I'm going to lock the match start time on the ground. So all of this information needs to be set up on the league side. So I'm going to untick round. Um, what you go to at the next section is you can put some notes in this section. So 
that might be regarding that's just a, just a, a space for you to put notes for yourself for later on so if there's something that you need to remember i.e you're not playing a particular saturday um just you can write it in the notes there and then you don't have to have it on on, the, on your desk um have a little bit here where you can say how many teams you're going to have play in your competition so i'm going to have four teams play and i'm going to have them play two times and again this helps with the fixture generation uh, tool because it will auto generate fixtures based on four teams playing everyone each other twice um, you can also set up some bars on your league table in this section so you can set up promotion and rele relegation if you wish and then there's the sponsors information which is where i said you can add a sponsor for your league which you can just add into this area here okay um the save buttons on each of these pages are at the bottom we usually rather than click through the tabs at the top i always just advise people just to press the save button at the end because it goes on to the next tab so if i press save here it'll come through and it'll go to results setup so what it's asking for here is it asking for um you to set up your um your points for your wins so i'm just going to put a uh, win winning points for five uh, lost points for zero you can do custom wins as well which is where you can put um conceded um, you've got conceded game tab here but you can put your own win conceded uh, points and lost conceded points as well if you wish but i'll just press save here or go on to the next tab so draws i'm going to leave that as no draws for now but if you put general draw for example it'll just tell you and give you a points field and again you've got custom draws field as well so you can add some custom draws there as well Get my light turned on. There we go. Um, tied games, and we've got um, a way to put tied game points in as well. A way to do non results. A way to do um, conceded games. A way to add bonus points as well. Um, and I'll take you through set up and how you do your bonus points as well. So you can add those in here. And you've also got a place where you can say if you're going to enable penalty points or not. And again, I'm just going to leave that tick for now. Um, I never really worry about this bit. If you ever need to use aggregated results, then come to the help desk and we'll talk about more. But it's it's combining some of the results sections into one on your lead table. So if you want to ties and draws, for example, to display as the same item, you can do it from this area here goes on to league table setup now where you can set up um, how the league table displays and what it's actually shown so i've got this so it's ranking as points and it's showing um, the points from right to left so it's showing this right at the end that that's the deciding factor if i wanted the second deciding factor to be on average points for example i could put this as ranking two and i could put that as ranking two so it would show my average points and then points on my league table if you didn't want a league table and uh, because it's it's junior fixtures and you don't want to display a league table at all setting all of these to zero means that no table is is, is set up so it's just a friendly competition if i go to reports now you've got an option where you can put in um that you want reports from the team regarding fair play ground and umpire and you've also got a place where you can ask for umpire submit reports from player playing ground and again i'll show you in setup how you uh, set up these reports but again it's, it's also in the powerpoint presentation as well so i'll only briefly go on it because there's a in-depth guide on how to do this this is where you put the kind of validation check in to make sure that you don't have to check every single report so you can put when you'd like the report in by by match day plus whatever and you can also select a time as well um and that, that that's that's basically the report section there now team management this is where you place your teams into uh into your competition um if i just press the add button here you have first have to search for a club and the only clubs that will come up are your league member clubs so i'm just going to go to anna's test site it will instantly populate the first team that's available to play which is the first team i'm going to select um the third team there now if you had a ground share in there um i.e you've got two clubs that are in the same division or in the same league they've got ground share you can set it up here if you wish to so 
it will just mean that when you are using any of the fixture generation tools, not the automatic one, um, but any of the, the bigger fixture generation tools we have, um, you can it, it will detect that as a validation check when you upload the fixtures and let you know that that ground is not available on that day. Um, so it's just a feature we've added there. If you're not worried about that, then don't worry about setting up the shared grounds. You just press save. And that'll add Anna's test site in there. Now, I've got these buttons now to delete and replace. If at any point I needed to delete a team from my divisions and I wasn't going to replace them, um, and you can do this after the fixtures have been generated and published as well, you can hit delete and that will remove that team from your division. And it will also remove the fixtures associated to that team. If you didn't actually want to remove them, but you want to replace them with another team, hitting the replace button will give you the option to replace that team and it will also move the fixtures to that team. So even if you've set everything up and you need to make a modification last minute for teams, you can do that through, this, through the, the divisions tool here. So I'm just going to add some other teams onto my um, division here. And you can see here that 13B is no longer an option for me to select because they're already playing in the division and a team can't play itself. So that's the second team. And you can select the same teams from the same club. You can select, so you see second team's not there anymore. So I can select four teams from the same club if I wish to. So I'm just gonna do that in my example. Okay, and that'll tell me that four or four teams have been approved for my league. Now there's no save button at this point because that's basically the end of the process in the setup of actually the the league table itself. The last two tabs is how you can generate fixtures from within the division itself, which works for standalone divisions. However, we'll go onto the fixture generation tool in just a second as well. And, and the division table just gives you a preview of what your division table will look like. You could have also got the way to adjust the positions on the league table if you need to. So you've got that and it's handled through there. Um, so with fixture management, if it was a simple, um, the league wasn't, there's was no real clubs that are going to be influenced by the fixtures, then you've got this generate fixtures button here. And this is a very basic tool that will just generate a set of fixtures based on those presets that we've put in there for you. Um, it won't take into account any ground shares or anything like that. Um, and if I press this button now, it'll come up and it will come up with the um, all the fixtures that I need to have. So it's listed how many, it's listed the site numerous times, but it hasn't put any start gates or grounds in. Um, if I knew that certain teams needed to be at home certain days, I could select different home sites. I can also put grounds in at this point as well. into the fixtures so I could populate this whole area here. Um, if I then press this auto generate fixtures, based on the information I've put in, which is they play on match days on Saturday and at one o'clock, it will put this all in for me. And it will generate me fixtures for the whole of this division, which I could just press generate and then it will generate and publish those fixtures. So that's, that's a simple way of just generating fixtures that are not very complicated, no ground shares are involved, you don't have to worry about any clashes with any of the divisions. You've got this way of doing fixture generation. Okay, just going to cancel all that one off there. And it comes up with the 12 fixtures need to generate, which is what we've got in our division. Okay, so I've gone back out of there. It's taken me out of my division, but I can see that Wales test is down here. Now, if I wanted to upload fixtures, that's done from within upload. So say, for example, I had um, somebody else has already done all my fixtures for a different system and I've got them all in an Excel spreadsheet. What the upload fixtures allows you to do is if as long as you put them into the play cricket format, which uses the club IDs and the team IDs instead of the names, you can then upload those directly into play cricket and use the validation checker just to check your rounds and stuff. So via uploads here, we've got this fixtures section here. And if I go to upload fixtures, it gives me a, a place where I can download my system IDs for the fixtures. So 
clicking on my system IDs here, it'll just bring up an Excel spreadsheet. Apologies for the delay in it opening. And this just comes up with um, all of the divisions that I have set up on, on my divisions. So if I just wanted to find my Wales test, I could scroll down and find um, Wales test. Yeah, there it is, sorry. And it gives me the division ID for Wales test, and it also gives me the club IDs. So I'm gonna show you the actual upload sheet now, because this looks pretty daunting at the moment. Um, but this is where you get your IDs from that the, the upload sheet is going to ask you for. So it gives you the division IDs in this column here, and it also gives you the team IDs. Also, the ground names are in here, and if the ground has an ID, it also has the ID next to the ground name as well. Okay. So that's the information that you get from the download bit there. Now, the actual fixture upload template is just this button here. Again, I'll open this up. And this is just a blank template. And all that's required here is for you to put your division IDs in. So if you're just loading up for one division, you take your division ID from your previous sheet. So I can say, um, Wales test, I want my division ID. Uh, yeah, enable editing would work. And just pop it into the box there. I just copy that and drag it down. Um, then I could fill out my dates. So if I know my, 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 my dates for my fixtures, you've already got them, you just put them in as a, as a column, it tells you the format here. So it's day, day, month, month, year, year, year. Time, I just put a time in, so 13th. I'll put my match date of the 7th. And then, if I'm just doing this simply, I can just put home team in ID and an away team. Um, usually what I do with this is I, when I, when I am doing this for clubs, uh, for, for leagues, I'll sit there and put all the, because usually they'll be on club names, I'll just do by find and replace in Excel, just to find the club name and replace it with the ID from this sheet here. But just say, just for this example, I wanted the first team and the second team playing each other on that first week. Just copy the, the first team's ID. and put that in the home team. And then I could copy the uh, second team's ID and put it in the away team. Okay, so that is, those five columns will generate you a fixture without a ground. So just having that information in there. So if I just save this now, I could go back to play cricket Choose my file. And then just click upload. And what it'll do here is it'll tell me that I've got one successful file to upload. And then it will tell me that I've got 10 that have failed because I haven't put any information in. If I press continue, That would upload my fixture and I can press continue. I can just say, I want to have my one file. So I'm gonna press continue again. This will ask me my validation check. So I'm gonna add ground populated as a validation check. And it's gonna say here that I've queried a match because there's no ground to be populated. And if I wish to publish it still, I could just tick it and just press publish all. And then what that would look like, if I go to day-to-day -day and then fixtures, 
I can see that I've got a fixture here, which is Wales Test, that's been published onto my league site. And it's against Anna's first team and Anna's second team there. So once you've kind of got your head around the kind of IDs section of it and the kind of copy paste and using Excel a little bit, um, this should help cut down um, adding fixtures onto the website because you can just generate all your divisions almost at once um, on the same Excel spreadsheet, put it in, and then it will check all your ground shares for all your divisions for you then to go through and, and check this off. Um, don't be too daunted by that. I, you know, I know looking at it the first time, you're thinking that's a lot of uh, numbers. Um, but this is on a test site, so there's a lot of information in there which you probably wouldn't need on, on your sites as well. Um, and you can filter it down a little bit as well. Okay, But that is how you can generate the fixtures using the tool. Now, the final thing I want just to do quickly, just show you some of the other bits in setup um, regarding your bonus points and validations. So if I go back to the admin bit here, they're all in this kind of area here. So you've got um, scoring rules, penalty points, validation rules. So this is where you set all these up here. So if you go into scoring rules, for example, it'll bring up all of those scoring rules that you saw on the first page. And if you decided they weren't quite right for you and you needed something a little bit more, you could click the one which is, say, say for example, you wanted a 45 over game. You could click the 40 over a side one, select it, press create a copy, and we can just say 45 overs. Save. And then it will let you modify anything in the scoring rule that you wish to. Um, I've got a lot of stuff that I've ticked as not applicable. And again, you can change those bits around as well. But if I just wanted to change my overs put innings to 45, just change that to 45 and save. And then pressing back, you can see there that I've got a scoring rule, which is 45 overs, which I can then select when creating my divisions. If you're looking for um, other bits and pieces in there, so bonus points, for example, uh, and, and Peter um, has done a lot of testing. I know Peter's on the call. He's done a lot of testing with bonus points. I've been hanging on the edge while he's doing his testing. So I think he's thoroughly tested this. Um, so he probably knows more about it than I do at this point. Um, but there's an option here where you can create your own bonus point schedules and, and just pressing add the bonus points you can just add a bonus point schedule and you've got options here for when you want the bonus points to be applied for and you can have um, different bonus points of different different results um, and then it gives you some of the ones that play cricket can auto generate so this isn't necessarily Every, we can't generate a bonus point structure for every one structure. Some structures are very unique. Uh, we try to do as best we can, but this allows you to do some basic, well, some basic and some quite complicated structures. Um, so you just go uh, through and you add uh, what you want, what you want to measure. So for batting runs scored, if I wanted to make sure that somebody got a point after 50 runs being scored. Um, I could just put 50 runs being scored and I can just say one point. And then that if this bonus point structure was applied to my division, it would give, once somebody has scored a 50 runs, whether it's the first team or second team, it would give them one bonus point. Okay. Um, again, the guy goes into this a little bit more and stuff, but you, usually this is very bespoke. Um, so I encourage people just to get in touch with us at help desk if they want help a little bit with this. And we'll try and check bits and pieces over and we'll, we'll try and test it as well, just to see if it will give us give you the actual result that you wish for it to use and stuff. Um, you can create your own test games as well if you wish, um, as long as you delete them afterwards because you don't want to mess around with people's stats. If I press back here, you can see that the, the Wales one that I've just set up here is there for me to edit or remove. So I can always come back to it there. Um, validation rules. Again, I could just add some validation rules. So if I just add another one here tonight for Wales, um, this allows you to say um, to enable whether you want to check if the result is being emptied for every result, if you want to check on whether the, each team are confirming them. 
And you can edit these by just saying edit. And I want to know if a result has not been entered after three days. And I can also say that I want to know the runs, wickets and overs. So what this will do if I apply this to my division is it would send you an alert to your action centre if a result had not been entered after match day plus three, which then means you can um, email the club. So you can set this up for result entry, information on team sheets, content of the actual scorecards themselves. And also there's a way that if you have created this, um, and like I said, I've done this backwards. So I didn't create this before creating my competition because if I wanted to apply it to my competition, I can just go to competitions here and select Wales test, and press save. And that'll add that validation rule to my Wales text division. Okay. So that's some of the rules there. You've got penalty points there, which I'm not going into as well. The other thing that we had on there was regarding umpire reports and team reports. And that's just controlled by this results section here. And there's team questions and umpire questions. And you can specify what you want to be asked, what you want teams to be asked about um, fair play, the ground and the umpire. If you're doing an umpire question and you want to get information on both umpires, just do the questions once and then based on what umpires are in your score sheet, it will tell you the questions based on which umpire. Uh, it will say, for example, if I, me and Tom were umpires on the sheet, it would say Chris and list these four questions and then it would say Tom and list these four questions. So you don't have to um, duplicate anything there. Okay. And again, the, the validation check within the division, you can set up how long people have to fill in these reports. And again, it goes onto your action centre if they don't do them. If you weren't interested in doing questions this way, you just wouldn't tick the boxes in the division. So you don't have to do that. Okay. So that's, that's the setup area there. Um, the, uh, the only other thing that I just said touch on um, is registered players. So if you did want to set up registered players, and again, it's on, on the spreadsheet, and I'm quite happy to go after it, after the Q&A session, because it's a little bit, um, I almost do a whole separate call on registered players usually. Um, but it goes through how you can define a, a process categories, agreements with other clubs. Um, and, and that's just basically just, it just sets up all the information that is front facing to a club when they register the player so it will ask them what category of player they are it'll also um, put all the agreements there for the clubs to tick to just demonstrate that they've checked certain aspects of the player's record um, and I can help people guide guide them through setting that up but I usually do that more as a separate thing there so that that's the basic setup um, I know that was a lot of information I've gone slightly over my time um, it is something just kind of nothing that you do really can break it um, until you kind of publish fixtures. So you can have a bit of a play uh, with this and, and set bits and pieces up. But as soon as you publish, publish fixtures, they are live on club sites to score. Um, so it's just it's just going through at a pace and, and just and just getting getting comfortable with it. And um, if you need help with setting up fixtures, especially if you're doing anything for this year and you're thinking, I've got, I've not got a lot of time to do this. This is where we come in on the help desk. Um, Hampshire League have got 16 divisions with 18 teams per division. And the fixtures for those leagues were uploaded by myself. So if people need help at that point, we are here to help with that. Um, we don't just let you guys go on your own. And that, that's the whole point of play cricket. We have this support that we're there to help with. So if you've got questions and you want to know the art of the possible, we will sit there and we'll go blue in the face trying to work out how to do something for you if, if we haven't figured it out already. Um, and, that's, uh, and that's where we come in as a help desk. So to get in touch with us at any point, if you're in admin, you've got this visit help desk button, which brings you to all the help guides in the YouTube channel with video guides. If you're on the front end of the site, you've got this question mark button here, and that takes you through the help desk. And I'll just go to the help desk now. And there's a search area where you can search for any guides, but you've also got the actual sections where you can go into the admin section and try and find a guide. Um, popular video tutorials are up there. 
recently viewed articles. So these are the most talked about articles at the moment. When it gets into season, it will be where the honor boards will be the first one on there, I guarantee it. Um, and then you've got submit a query down here and this is how you get in touch with us at the help desk. Um, and by giving us as much information as you can, uh, it means that we can almost test what, or, or work out what we can do for you before contacting you. But otherwise, um, we'll have a two-way conversation or get on Teams and, and do a bit of screen sharing as well. So that, that, that's always an option there as well, guys. So um, I hope that's been helpful. I'm going to hand back um, and then we'll just do some questions. Is that okay? I think I covered everything. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Um, Tom, do we have uh, any questions in the chat box? Uh, no, nothing. I'm, I'm guessing that uh, either everyone's really happy or they're waiting to uh, talk to you uh, themselves, Chris. Probably sheer terror, usually, um, when it comes to the, the League one, guys. Um, I'm used to it. If anyone does have any questions and stuff, um, if, if you... If you don't wish them to be recorded, then just 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 hang on a second because we will stop the recording and I do hang about afterwards. So if you've got a question and you're not really comfortable with it being recorded, then I just encourage people to just hang about after the session and I can try and pick them up there or you come directly to the help desk with me and I can go that way. Um, but if anyone's got any questions, they don't mind it being recorded, um, then then just put your, your hands up. I don't quite know how I see it on Teams, but I've got helpers here to help me, so. Chris, I think if you stop screen sharing, we can then see people yeah. if they wanted to wave or do anything like that. Brilliant. Well, good. Chris. Who hey, else, Peter? Hi there, Peter. Uh, no, Josh. Josh. Oh, oh, sorry, Josh. Sorry, was it? Um, I've had a couple of issues trying to log into my Play Cricket account. I was just wondering how I could um, potentially get the password back. Okay, no worries, Josh. Um, best thing to do is just go to that, uh, go to our help desk page, go to submit a query, um, use pop pop the email address that your account is on, right? Um, send that over to us, and then I'll pick that up um, either after tonight's call, and 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 work through and try and work out where the issue is, um, or or get in touch tomorrow morning with you and get that sorted. So I can I can do that with you that way. I think. Um, Thanks very much, Chris. No worries, mate. Uh, Peter, wave your hand. Right. Uh, on the league front home page, landing page, yeah. is there a way of us getting a, uh, a link or a pop up, or better still, getting the Wales Honour Board to show? Not currently. So the Honours Boards that we have are produced by a separate. A provider to play cricket so that's done by the the marketing team of the ecb uh, and they're very precious about that um so currently they're only available via the emails and then we we managed to wrestle through them the um dropbox file every season to add it to our help desk so we can get we we have a back door route almost for those as well um so yeah they're very precious about that however we have it, it's something that we've been looking at for a while and seeing how much that information that we've got a developer doing for us, how much it can potentially be moved more back into play cricket. So that's more of a kind of future result because our, our product manager, I, I can tell you, um, would like to, would love it to be on the league homepage or on a county board page rather than the current uh, way. But um, yeah, um, it's something that can't be done at the moment, but it's something that's definitely there on our minds as well. It would be something that would attract people to the site because they, those county boards seem to be, uh, the um, uh, the honours board seems to be quite popular. Yeah, that's why I did my comment at the end on the uh, the, the help centre there, because when it gets into season, we have 2,000 people going onto that help desk article, um, just, just trying to get the back door to the honours boards. Um, but yeah, at the moment, they are kind, kind of combined to the player comms, but because we know of the demand for them, we try and get that, we get that back door in as quick as we can. Um, and we will be doing for this season as well, so. Great, thanks for that. Any more questions from anyone? 
Yeah, I, I'll ask Martin. you a again. Uh, uh, Chris and Martin, I run the Pembrokeshire uh, Junior Leagues, and Peter has uploaded um, the fixtures onto our Play Cricket site. Uh, this will be the first year that we're going to do or use Play Cricket, and I think there is a lot of nervousness out there at the moment. Um, People are willing to have a go, but are we saying that they've got to, um, if, if, if a club enters a result, that other club, the second club has got to confirm that result. If they don't, what happens then? Because there's a couple of clubs who are not even on play cricket. Um, I, I was looking at our league site when you were going through the examples there. And there's definitely one junior, um, or one club with junior sides who are not even on play cricket. And, uh, you know, knowing that club, they're not, the people involved are not very computer literate. Okay. So the, the, the actual, the validation checks are controlled. They're not on by default. Um, they're, they're more controlled by yourselves as a league. So for the first year, if you didn't want to really hammer home and make sure that people were filling out bits and pieces you wanted it or then you don't have to have them turned on if it is against a club that isn't in play cricket the away tight team uh the, the validation check doesn't go off because it the system understands that there's no website there so it won't go off for the club that hasn't is not on play cricket um it'll only trigger for when both clubs are on there same with the, the captain's reports and uh, sorry the team reports and the umpire reports it won't trigger that club to fill them out and then and then spam the league saying this club hasn't filled these out because it'll appreciate they're not there. Mm -hmm. um, the the advantage that we that we have for the junior leagues uh, against some other systems, I think that when I've done some work in Hampshire and this something's come up is that only one club needs to fill out the result. Um, so that one club can have access to the other club's team sheets and the other club's result sheets. So they can change the team if they need to, if there's a mistake in the team sheet from the scorebook to, to the, um, to, to the uh, scorecard, sorry. Um, so they can do that there. Uh, the validation checks are just more built in to then make sure that that away club felt more secure with that kind of process. Um, and then we built it more in so the leagues then can have their little bit more security just to say that yes yeah, someone's checking this and it's not a one-sided thing not that i'm saying that a junior side would probably do that and give yeah. themselves 200 runs and give the other team none but it's just there just for the peace of mind um so how you use the validation checks really comes down to you as a league and you as a club so find find the correct balance which is making sure the data is in there to to what people are comfortable with is what my advice there the, the other thing with it as well is it's, it's not designed as an intrusive check. It comes onto the action center. It doesn't send an email out unless somebody prompts it to. So if a result isn't filled in in time, the worst case scenario for a club is that by the end of the season, they have 18 messages saying on their action center, you haven't filled this out in time. And again, at that point, it's you as a league that decide whether you can, you from the league site, you can just clear those down and say, yeah, I'm not interested in the validating those results anymore so you can just take that pressure completely away um so you've you've got that option on your action center to remove items from the club's action center around that um, and you can then prompt it completion from the action center as well so again it comes down to your kind of control on what, what you want to do with it as a league rather than being dictated by the system so hopefully hopefully that helped there um and, and it, again, it is all about getting engagement and it's, it is daunting going onto a new system at any point. Um, you're going to have, they're going to, people, people are going to think this is more complicated than what I'm used to. Um, I've not had to do this before. So there are questions that will come up. The, the advantages to it is what the players get out of it and what the juniors get out of it. So they get it recorded against their name, how many runs they've scored. And they can carry that with them then throughout their cricketing career because it just goes up and up and up and up. Um, so we can we if a record is created properly on play cricket, it just the, the sky's the limit of what that junior is going to have access to later on. Um, the other thing that makes it a lot easier, and we haven't really gone into it in this call a bit, and I really I think I should have done a little bit, is we've got the two scoring programs that we've got, and 
if clubs can get used to using them, and I know a lot of clubs are attached to scorebooks, and that, that's fine. We have the option for you to enter scorebook directly into Play Cricket and into the mobile phone app. Um, but if clubs can get used to using the digital scoring options, um, it would take their result entry from 20 minutes at the end of the day down to 30 seconds where they can just review the scorecard because anything entered into those apps automatically uploads to play cricket. Mm. So and um, we'll demonstrate this on the call to the clubs. And I, I, I sit there and I, I do take my time when entering the result into play cricket to just demonstrate that it takes 20 minutes to upload a proper scorecard of 11 players um, versus 11 players or eight, eight players versus eight players. But then we can do a scoring app. And while we're using that and enjoying the game and watching it and scoring as we go, that then just sends the same information down to stop clubs. So trying to reduce the work at that point sometimes means that they've got the more kind of work to make sure the validations are going on and stuff. So it's all about balance. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered the question, but I do tend to waffle. So if I've completely missed the point, I do apologise. Thank you. Do we have any more questions before we wrap up? If not, um, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in tonight. Um, as Chris said, the, the help desk is there. You've, you've seen the two real human faces of the help desk here uh, amongst others. So that's really good to know. Next week, we're gonna go more into what we've just been talking about, which is the creation of uh, scorecards and results and really the end product, which is, as Chris said, you know, the, the joy of finding out all about the stats, so your own record, your team's record, um, and and all the, all that great stuff. Do have a quick look at the, the short video, which is on the um, uh, Play Cricket site and the Cricket Wales website, uh, um, which actually brings to life what everything that we're talking about. Tonight will be recorded, next week will be recorded, so you haven't missed a, a thing if you tuned in late. Um, and finally, just for me to say thank you to uh, uh, Chris and Tom for uh, putting out their time for us tonight. Uh, very grateful for you both. And we look forward to seeing you all uh, and, uh, and many, many more people actually uh, next week. Do remember to, you have to register for next week's because we've got um, probably 120 plus people already registered. So if you could do that, that would be good. And good to see you all. Have a good night.